Hi, this is your instructor Yüksel Günal. In this video lecture, I'm going to introduce you to Android Studio. I have installed Android Studio ahead of time. I would recommend that you go over the lecture notes briefly. If, if not at that, uh, just go look over and see what I'm going to do in this video lecture. The outline there in the lecture notes. You don't have to understand everything there fully to follow this lecture, but I would recommend that you at least uh, take a glance. Now, I installed Android Studio. You can uh, you can run it by looking at all programs. Android Studio is here. I also added an icon here, so I'll just click on this icon. The uh, the user interface you'll get when you first when you run Android Studio the very first time will be different than what what uh, what I see because I already ran it. Uh, the the user interface you'll get uh, is shown as a snapshot on the lecture notes. So uh, but it but it should be still straightforward to work with it. Now, when it first comes up, it gives you some tips. This is useful and a lot of IDs. This is an IDE, by the way. Uh, an IDE is an Integrated Development Environment, IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Uh, IDEs typically provide the editors, debuggers, compilers, etc. It's a complete, complete development environment. And Android Studio, although it's a bit bulky, it's very powerful. In the sense that you can write your program, it allows you to uh, create uh, user interfaces. You don't have to write your own uh, user interfaces manually. You can just use Visual Editor to create user uh, uh, interface widgets like buttons, text areas, uh, dates, etc. And then you can actually use virtual devices that the Android Studio provides to run your application. And also, when you first bring it up, comes up comes up with some tips. This is so that you you become familiar with some of the features. You can either look at the tips to just remember what uh, what some of the uh, features of the tool is, or you can just say close. Let's just close it. Now, uh, while I was preparing the lecture, I created a program, uh, an application already, and I ran it. But I'll repeat the steps here for you to see. Now, the first thing we do is you go to file. New, new project. Okay, you're creating a new project. Let's call our new project. Um, Hello, um, Boazichi. You get this wizard, so-called wizard, new project, that guides you through creating a particular project. Now, you type in the application name, get company domain. Although it says company, uh, what I choose chose to do is I use my first name dot physics four eighty four dot bu Boaz university and dot edu educational, and then it it chooses a default project location. Now this is by default where Android creates these uh, uh, projects, so it gives a, a name to the project. It, it relies on what you give as the application name. So you can play with this as you like. It doesn't have to be Hello Boaz. You can give any project application name you like. Now. You click next, and I I had run over these steps in the lecture notes as well. You select uh, the the uh, the platform uh, where you will run this uh, application and some of the features. For now, let's not worry about uh, these too much. But or, or the default is that we're going to run it on a phone or a tablet, and we we choose the minimum SDK. Uh, software development kit is what SDK means. Software development kit. Uh, it's ice cream sandwich, a previous version of an earlier version of Android, so that we can support older devices. Now, we're, we're just going to skip those for now. We're not really worrying about those things. And then uh, you'll choose an activity. You can see that there are lots of different uh, activities that uh, the Android Studio supports. Now, first of all, I should introduce the concept of an activity. Activity is essentially an uh, activity in the context of Android Studio or Android programming is one particular task you can complete on, on user interface on your phone. For instance, dialing a phone number or uh, looking at map. And there is actually a map activity that we'll use later. Or logging into your bank account. For instance, there is a login activity. It provides a, the basics of logging into an application, username and password fields. So an activity. It's also a Java class, and that's why we spent so much time on Java before, because without understanding Java, you cannot really get a full grip on Android programming. Um, 
uh, an activity is essentially a base Java, abstract Java class, uh, which is extended to build other uh, uh, base, some basic tasks. And we'll choose blank activity. We'll just uh, uh, blank or empty activity to begin with. So let's give a name to our main activity. Let's call it hello activity. And there are some default uh, names cho chosen for layout name and title. You'll see how these uh, end up in our project. And use a fragment. Now, fragment, we'll, we'll talk about fragments later, but it's something that you use when you do tablet programming. Uh, we'll come to that later. Let's just click Finish. Now, it's going to take a while to generate, to create this program. Now, I hope you have a fast computer um, because the Android Studio, as I said, is a bit bulky. It's executing some tasks. As you see, it looks like there is nothing going on, but that's not true. There are some tasks being executed, and, and you see the, some processes running. I wish this was a bit um, more user-friendly in the sense that it show what percentage of the task left remaining, etc. But now look. I have the program, the project, whole project built without writing a single line of code. Now, uh, there are so many things showing up on UI right now, and you may be a bit overwhelmed by what you see. But uh, no worries, we'll walk through this. Actually, what you see here, which, is, which looks overwhelming, you'll see how useful these are uh, in the second lecture I'll have in this in this course. I, in, I mean, in the Android, uh, Android Studio uh, part of the course. Now, see what came up. Essentially, uh, we designed a user interface, or let's use the Android terminology, an activity. We designed an activity that shows on shows up on a telephone. We're not really running this on a on a device yet. We're not running on a device yet. This is just a design. See this design uh, uh, tab here. It shows you what we designed by choosing the activity. If you click text, you'll see what what's underneath that design. Now again, this is this may look overwhelming, but we'll walk through step by step. What looks overwhelming is actually rather simple. This is an XML file. I'll introduce the concept of XML file later. Uh, don't worry about these again. Let's just look at the design. So this design view shows you how UI will look, user interface will look on your device. If you click on text, is uh, how Android reads a, a, a particular XML file to generate this text. So, in other words, Android operate, uh, operating system takes this file and, among other things, and builds this UI. So, this is the input to Android, and this is what Android does on your uh, Android device. Now, let's go to design view. Um, what we're going to do next is run this on a, uh, on a device. Let me just repeat the concepts we have talked about. An activity is a specific task you complete on, on a UI, uh, UI panel. And in this case, in this example, our activity is just showing this view, just hello world and a button here. But, the, but this is not interactive. We're not running anything live. This is just the design part, and this is the text that leads to that design. Now, uh, you might see that. Actually, part of the design is this keyword, hello world. There's some warning here. We'll come to that later, why uh, why Android is complaining about it. It's not really a complaint, but uh, this could have been done better. Still, we'll come back to it. So hello world, that's how it shows up on UI. So let's go to design. Now, next next thing I'm going to do to show you is how to run this uh, on, on your uh, device. Let's say you've done your development, you did your design, you want to test it on a machine, uh, on, a, on an Android device rather. Uh, could be a phone, could be a tablet. And as you know, there are tons of Android devices out there. Lots of companies make lots of different Android devices. Um, and how do you make sure you can test it? Well, let's, let's do this. Click Choose App right here. Then go here. You see this green Play button. Click on that. Now, uh, a device chooser comes up. Here it says choose a running device, and there is nothing here. What this means is that there is no device, physical hardware, attached to my computer uh, that, that, that the Android Studio could use. Now, 
in this development environment, I have a bunch of development environments. I, in fact, I do not have any hardware attached to this computer. So, what do you do? And in principle, if you if you have your if you have iPhone rather than an Android device, and you want to do Android programming, how do you test your uh, uh, programs? Do you purchase an Android device just to do that? The answer is no. You can actually emulate emulate an Android device. Actually, lots of them. You see this launch emulator, and there are a bunch of them that, that comes with the uh, with the Android Studio. There are actually three. I created one, uh, and then you can choose one of these virtual devices, so-called Android virtual devices. Try it. We'll we'll do that. Let's let's first create one virtual device. Uh, I created one for the lecture notes. I'll create an, another one for the video lecture. Let's go to tools to to do that to create a virtual device. Again, a virtual device is is essentially a computer program that emulates a particular phone or a tablet. Now you go to Android, you go to AVD, the manager. So this view comes up, your virtual devices. See, I have four virtual devices. Three of them came with Android Studio. The top two and this one, Nexus 5. I created this one on my own. Let's create a new one uh, for this video lecture. Now you go to this button, plus create virtual device, you click on it. Let's choose a particular device. Let's choose, you can either choose a phone or a tablet or where. I'm not going to talk about where and TV in this lecture. I'll just talk about phone and tablet. Um, let's go to phone. Let's, let's just say we choose, uh, this is an older model. Let's just choose something newer, a larger screen. Let's say we have smaller screens. Let's choose, let's choose Nexus 6P. Okay, screen size 5.7 inches, resolution 1440 times uh, 2560, uh, density 560 DPI. Now, uh, so that's that's device or emulated device. Let's click next. Now let's choose the, uh, the default system image. Let's click, and then um, we have the configuration shown. Uh, you can choose a few things. Let's cho choose the defaults. By default, this will sh come up as in portrait mode. You can, if you like, choose landscape mode, but I'll choose uh, the portrait mode. As, as you do more and more complicated programming, you may choose your own different devices. Okay. Now, let's just say click, finish, and it's creating a device. And by the way, um, these devices. Uh, take a lot of space on our drive like this one we just created has he has 650 50 megabytes on disk and this is not at all surprising because a uh, an android device is, uh, is rather complicated it supports lots of stuff and will will uh, uh, lots of features uh, applications once we run we'll see how those work now let's close this view now next Let's run our application on the device that we just created. Again, we chose the application. We go to play, launch emulator, launch emulator. Let's go to, to the device that we just created. It was Nexus 6P. Let's click OK. Now, this is going to take a while. Um, and I want to show you a few things. Uh, the, the very first time the vir a virtual device is brought up, uh, it's going to take a while. Now you can see the uh, log messages coming up. See on the background, uh, Android Studio is run running the emulator. Let's look at it. So it's running emulator.exe, a program, net delay. So it's setting up the uh, device. Now, as I said, this is going to take some time. Um, in the meantime, while this is coming up, I'm going to show you a few other things. Okay. When we create, when we had, uh, when we had Android Studio create this project, it created a bunch of stuff. If you look here, let's let's look at a few of them while the device is coming up. We have Hello Activity. So this is the Java program that uh, that uh, Android Studio created. Uh, we'll talk about these at length, but I just want to say a few words. If, as you see, this Hello Activity class extends App Compact Activity. If you click, uh, if you press the control button and click on, on the class and continue, you'll see the uh, 
uh, hierarchy. So this is the uh, base activity class, okay? And which is extended by, you don't have to know all these, but then by, by extended by an abstract base fragment activity class, which in turn extended by base fragment activity, honeycomb, etc. But these are all base, base Android classes. You don't really need to know a lot of details about these. You just need to know how to use them. Uh, and of course, the APIs, the methods, or what you need to implement. But what, what we need to implement, and this override implies, implies what needs to be implemented, is on create method. See, on create method. On create options menu, we'll come to that. On options item selected. But the key thing is this on create method. The first time your application comes up, it runs this on create method to set up the user interface. And it's first setting up the content from the layout, activity hello layout. And it gets a reference to the toolbar and uh, supports the toolbar. And then there is this floating action button. We'll come to that later. I'll show you what that is. Uh, oops. Um, as you see, our virtual device came up. With the, uh, it says Hello Boazici, the title, and then Prince Hello World. This is the floating uh, action button. See, when you click on it, 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 it kind of floats up. And so that this line of code here is that floating, floating action button. Uh, don't worry about these again. I will come back to these, but uh, I, just, I was just going over the, the various things that Android Studio creates uh, while we were waiting for the virtual device to come up. Now, this is the device uh, con content. This is the, uh, the activity we just designed. And there are strings that are strings defined. For instance, app name, hello, Boazici, that you see here. Is designed is is defined here. We can change this and see a different thing. And settings, see the settings comes from this string again. We'll do all of these things. So if you cannot, if you don't follow all of these, that's okay. We'll come back to these. We'll actually do one more a more extensive example this week tomorrow. Um, let's first look at the uh, the example we have. So the application came up. It doesn't do anything. It just prints hello world and that that's it. But Let's play with this virtual device a little bit. Uh, I want to show you a few things. Uh, first of all, this log cat shows what's happening on the virtual device. And this is advanced stuff. Uh, if there are errors, it's going to show you what's happening. Now, memory. You see, this is a very useful panel. You can look at the memory usage of your application. Okay. Uh, you can you look at the CPU usage. In, uh, GPU usage, network traffic, there is no network traffic here. There is really nothing going on over the network. But there is a rich set of uh, tools that allows you to uh, to measure the performance of your application, if you will. For instance, uh, you may ask the question, why I would need this memory monitor? Well, sometimes the applications could have so-called memory leaks. That is, you're using memory but not freeing them up. If, uh, if that's the case, it would show up right here. If you continue to see, if you see a continuous increase of memory, then you know that there's a problem with your uh, memory handling. And CPU, you might see if you're using a lot of CPU, because if you're using a lot of CPU, other applications running on your device may suffer. So you can see there's just a little bit of CPU usage. Maybe we can trigger some more CPU usage here. Let's see. Let's click on this. See, I clicked on it and some CPU was used. Click again. See some CPU was used. Now let's let's actually look at this device. Um, see, this is just just like a regular Android uh, phone. So it shows you this pretty cool. It's emulating an Android phone, a basic Android phone. It's Nexus 6P. Now, if you click on, if you're familiar with uh, with uh, Android devices, if you call, click on this, you'll see the uh, the applications the device has. See where, where our application is. So this is our application. In the future, we can, of course, introduce a custom uh, image to, sh to, to actually represent our applications. This is a very basic Android representation, right? All other applications have some, uh, some images that uh, 
that in a way represent what the application is doing. So, but, but that's not an important topic at this time. So click on Hello, Hello Boazici and it comes up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, a very simple exercise. Rather than Hello World, why don't we print something else? Let's go here, content uh, underscore hello.xml. This is where we designed the activities user interface. And these are the widgets we use, user interface widgets that we can use. And I'll come back to this very rich set of uh, user interface uh, uh, components that we can use on, on UI. We'll use lots of examples. Now, design allows you to visually change the design. Let's go to text. Um, and I'll do something really simple. Rather than hello world, I'll say hello for aid for students. Let's just save the file. And to save that, you hold the hold down the control key and then click S. So that's one way to save. Control S. Just like any other editor these days, they, 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 um, the, the keys usually are uh, reused all over the, uh, the all over different editing programs. Now, now that we made the change, how do we uh, see the change in the application? Well, we have to run it again. So let's go to app. You can do just okay, you don't have to do right click. So we choose the app and go here, click run. And this is a running device. So it shows me a, a, a device that's already running. Uh, if you have a device, physical device connected to your computer, it will also show up here. So let's just use it. Let's not, I mean, for if you want to play with this, you can choose uh, launch emulator, choose another device just to see how it looks on another device like a tablet, but let's not worry about it at this time. Let's click OK. Now, it's going to take a while. Uh, Android Studio used to be a lot more slower. It actually got uh, faster over time. The first time I, I used Android uh, Studio uh, was I think it was last year, and it was a lot slower than this. I think it, it got faster over time. See, now I reran it, and now I have Hello Physics 484 students. So that's changed. Now we can do other things like getting rid of this button, etc. But uh, I'll do something else in in the next lecture. What we will do, we will introduce interactivity. Uh, we'll we'll have a uh, question a question and answer application very simple one like a question the answers are yes and yes or no and then once clicked yes or no clicked if the answer is correct you'll see a, a, a sign a text saying correct you got it right or incorrect you got it wrong so that's the end of the on the of, of the like first lecture on the android studio but we'll have a lot more examples